Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. It seems like everyone online talks about the same types of places. You hear about, you know, going to Thailand, or you go to Portugal, or you go to UAE, or you go to Mexico, or Panama, or something like this. So today we're going to talk about a country that people don't talk about, which actually is quite interesting from the perspective of the whole freedom conversation, which is an issue for certain people, right? Uh, quite a few people actually. And so this country is Bosnia-Herzegovina. All right, so uh, we're going to dive in. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how the taxes work there, about how things are from the standpoint of uh, freedoms, etc. Kind of just the function of the country in general, what it's like geographically, uh, what some of the cities are like, etc. And, you know, maybe you will want to go and check it out. So. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I really appreciate your support. Thank you. Every All the help you can give is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Please share the video with your friends. And if you'd like help with the topics that we deal with here, international tax optimization, where to relocate to, getting residencies and second citizenships, etc., please reach out to me. You can book a call. Calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rodsmer. There's a link in the description below. Or you can send a message through our websites, offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. All right, so uh, Bosnia, I'm just going to refer to it generally as Bosnia, although technically speaking it's the full, the full name, uh, is one of the most unusual countries in the region, I would say, and you'll get into that in a second. So for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, it's part of former Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia broke up uh, in around the early 90s. Uh, they had the famous civil war, which was really terrible, and set that whole region back quite far. Uh, at the end, uh, well, a lot of the fighting that took place took place in Bosnia, okay? So you had, I would say that the major fighting was between Serbia and Croatia, and it was in this, uh, this area of Bosnia, a lot of it. So that was really terrible, and to this date, one of the main drawbacks, I think, is that there are still landmines in something like 2% of the country. So they've done a lot of work to clear things out, etc., and you know, you can avoid those areas, but not good. Uh, Kosovo obviously was another area that was, you know, really, really messed up yeah, by all the, the violence that's taken place in that area. Very sad. Uh, anyway, this being said, uh, it is a place that people don't talk about too much. It is almost entirely uh, landlocked. So unlike, say, basically the Cro if you're going down Croatia, you can pretty much always just hop across the border really easily. It's common for people from Bosnia to go and live in Serbia and Belgrade, etc. I have some people who work for me who uh, are from Bosnia originally. Principally, they live in Serbia, but you know, some of the time uh, in Bosnia. Great people. Uh, very hospitable culture, known for creating some great sweets, etc. So nice to go and check out in that regard. I would say that English, generally speaking, is not quite as good as it is in Serbia, Montenegro, places like that, certainly Croatia as well. It's just not got as much tourism in it as, uh, as Croatia, Montenegro do, just because of the, the coastline. However, there's tons of really beautiful places. Uh, there's an area in Croatia, a little national park, an uh, area called Lake Plitvice. Yeah, my pronunciation is terrible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy some of the pronunciation on these words, which you know, my wife will, uh, will attack me for. So I'm not going to try and get it right. I'm just going to recognize that my pronunciation is bad and apologize in advance. Anyway, beautiful area, very, very beautiful in Croatia. Uh, and a lot of people know about that area, but there's actually similar, all these little waterfalls in Bosnia, just across uh, the border, kind of down near where uh, Dubrovnik is in the southern part of Croatia. So worth going and checking that out. Uh, the biggest city, the capital, is Sarajevo, uh, which was really known as kind of an artistic, uh, like educational hub in the XU days. Unfortunately, it was really racked heavily during the war, but uh, it really has that, that history. There's also uh, Mostar, which is uh, got this very famous bridge, uh, quite beautiful. There's a lot of, oftentimes, if you're staying in Dubrovnik, you'll go and you'll take tours up to Mostar, uh, to Sarajevo, etc., uh, to go in there. Uh, there's For Christian people, you know, well, Catholics, I guess, particularly, there's an area called Medjugorje, and so that's quite famous uh, as well. And in general, it's kind of a, 
there's quite a diverse rocky terrain, I guess I would say. It's not super easy to drive through in the sense that there's a lot of winding roads, it's a lot of small roads, I mean, depending on which way, where you go, etc. cetera. Uh, it's not amazingly connected, it's not, you know, as bad as, say, you know, the connections in Tivat in terms of flights, but definitely not, you know, as well connected as Sofia or something like that. Uh, so not, not great in that regard. This being said, uh, there's actually quite a bit to like. So first of all, very low cost of living. For people who are looking for low cost of living, you can get it in Bosnia, for sure, no issues. Uh, number two, quite favorable taxes. So we talk a lot about the taxes in uh, Montenegro, 9%, 10% in Bulgaria, etc. But actually Bosnia is 10% as well. And uh, unlike uh, the changes that were brought into uh, Bulgaria, where they brought in the CFC rules, there's no CFC rules in Bosnia, so that's kind of cool, it helps with, uh, you know, being able to optimize your tax position, although there are management and control rules. We'll talk about the practicalities of the situation in Bosnia in a moment. But again, pretty good in that regard. Uh, definitely a very competitive tax regime as far as you know, Europe goes. And so, yeah, that's quite great. Um, in addition to that, there are quite a lot of freedoms there. So one of the ones that might be noteworthy for a lot of people who are coming from, say, the U.S., etc., is there's pretty much more guns per capita in Bosnia than, I think, it might be the top in all of Europe. So it's quite high. Now, it's interesting because on paper, the gun laws are not especially lenient. They're not terrible either, uh, but they're not, like, really out there. But everybody has guns kind of thing. Uh, it's super, super common that people have AK-47s, etc. And so, you know, it's one of these interesting sort of juxtapositions that happens in some of these parts of the world where, you know, you can go and learn about a place from a textbook. You can go and read about it on paper, read the laws, etc. And that doesn't necessarily tell you about what it's really like in real life. So both in terms of the uh, gun laws uh, and in terms of the taxes, uh, already pretty lenient, right? So there's that. But on top of that, you know, this is a country where uh, it's easy to get away with lots of different types of things. In addition, what's very interesting for a lot of people is it is the least vaccinated country in Europe, uh, lower than Bulgaria, etc. Uh, in fact, they, you know, haven't been good at even procuring vaccines in Bosnia. So from that standpoint, tells you a little bit about the state of, uh, of the country and kind of the type of life that people can have. So I often have people who come and ask me, you know, where can I go and live in peace and things like this? And I think of the places that I can think of, Bosnia might be one of the top ones. Now, of course, you know, you're, you're, the consequences of this is you're probably going to live a fairly rural life, right? Um, you know, maybe you're okay with that. Maybe that's something that you're looking for. I think that the idea that you're going to live in a major city and try and coexist with you know, millions of people and go someplace where people are just going to leave you alone is not going to happen. And for obvious reasons, you know, it's just you, the more concentration of people, the more structure of law and things like this you need to have in order for it not to result in some blowing up uh, situation. Uh, so Bosnia, though, I mean, it's very easy to go and to have a house somewhere that can cost very, very little, right? Very, very little. You can buy some land, etc. You can buy a river. It can be quite nice. Like I said, very hospitable people. And, uh, and you could go and, you know, live quite a lot in peace. Uh, you're going to get mostly traditional cuisine there. Uh, they're famous for some of their, their traditional Bosnian food, uh, things like burek. And uh, that's a whole other conversation. My wife would uh, go on about, you know, what is burek and what is not burek and things like this. Uh, well, let's talk about how Bosnia is kind of a weird place, uh, different from a lot of these others. So Bosnia, there, there's Bosnia, but actually there's Republic Srpska, there is Bosnia-Herzegovina, and there's one other one, which again, I'm not going to try and pronounce because my wife is going to come and kill me. Uh, but there's basically like three, it's almost like, you know, they're like more than provinces inside Bosnia that gives them this really interesting dynamic. And what I mean by this is, for example, there's separate tax rules in each of these three places. Now, or each of these three parts of the country. Now, 
In practice, those tax rules are very similar between them, but technically speaking, they're different. And so if you go through and you're studying the rules in the place, you're gonna find like, here's the rules for you know, Bosnia and Herzegovina, here's the rules in Republic Srpska, et cetera, right? And, and for like every item. So, and it's not like, hey, here's the national, and then this layers on top. No, no, it's like, this is their entire rules. So quite interesting in terms of how the, the region is composed. Uh, in the summer, it's quite warm. Uh, I have been there in, uh, let's see here, uh, spring, summer, uh, fall, like these, these periods, I've never been there during the winter, and uh, found it to be quite hot in some of the areas during, uh, during like the late spring, I guess it would be maybe around May-ish, something like that. So, you know, that gives you, gives you some idea Obviously, you know, just geographically, it gets cooler during the winter, uh, but certainly not, not terrible. And so I think it's a place that a lot of people don't really look about at, they don't really think about too much. It doesn't get talked about. I don't hear really anybody going on about it, but actually there's quite a bit to appreciate about it. And I personally would not want to live there mainly because I'm more an urban person. I like my conveniences. I like infrastructure. I like all that kind of thing. And you definitely get less of that in Bosnia. Uh, however, you know, not all people are like that. A lot of people would like space, they'd like low cost, they'd like to, you know, go to a market and, you know, have a small circle of local people and, you know, enjoy their peace, etc. And for that, I think it's really an underrated place, especially when you're talking about taxes, uh, you know, gun freedoms, etc. Like there's just a lot of these types of things that are just not burdensome the same way they would be if you were to go to, like for example, you know, you could go into rural Finland or something, but you know, rural Finland is not remotely comparable to uh, rural Bosnia. So anyway, for what it's worth, that is uh, a little bit of a summary, a little bit of an overview. Uh, let me know if you have questions in the comments below. I may do another video on it going into some of the other details. Of, uh, of Bosnia, but I think it's worth checking out for people who are going and exploring the area. I'm a really big fan of exploring lots of places. So in my opinion, it's a great thing if you get a chance every year to go to some new areas, check them out, uh, spend some time maybe long staying in a region and traveling around there. I think especially as we're able to work a lot more remotely, it's just a great opportunity to take advantage of. And this would be a place that uh, just gets overlooked by a lot of people. So hope you like it. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Follow me on Twitter at Michael Rosmer. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you on the next video.